Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for another session of Lancaster Safety's Webinar Wednesdays. My name is Emily, and I am an OSHA online training lead with Lancaster Safety. I'm joined today by Kara and Giselle, who work in our scheduling and recruiting departments. We all participate in our company's safety committee, and we're excited to get into today's discussion. So I'd like to start off today's webinar simply by asking you to think about your company's safety committee. Do you have an established committee? Are there set members and roles? Do you think it's easy or difficult to recruit members to participate on the committee? Is it successful in meeting its goals? So whether you're at the beginning stages of establishing a safety committee or you've had a safety committee in place for years, you're in the right place. This webinar will look at the function and role of a safety committee and provide you with the information you need to make sure that your committee is meaningful and successful. Thank you, Emily. Today's primary goal is to take a look at how a safety committee can be meaningful and successful, and also give you the information you need to really improve your safety committee's meetings, or at least start one. A safety committee is one of the important elements in creating a great safety culture, which is why we wanted to take a deeper look into effective safety committees. Today, we'll be reviewing the benefits of having a safety committee, why your safety committee might be failing, tips for a successful safety committee, mistakes to avoid, how to get our employees involved, and how to make your meetings interactive, fun, and successful. All right, so let's start off with a little Insta safety quiz here. So the question is, do you currently have a safety committee in place? You can either choose A, yes, but we would like it to be more effective, B, no, but we would like more information on starting one, or C, I'm not sure if we have one or not. So you can put your answer in the chat box below. This was a tricky one. There's no right or wrong answer here, but we wanted to get more information about our audience today. As the answers are coming in, it looks like most people do have a safety committee in place, but would like help to make it more effective. It's great to see that so many of you have an established committee, and if you're still working on forming one, you're in the right place. Let's jump in and start discussing the benefits of having a safety committee. To start, why do you want to have a safety committee? There's a significant positive impact on the health and safety of employees and the safety culture of the organization if you regularly meet to discuss safety. It shows the importance of safety and how seriously your company is taking it. It also allows employees from any level to be involved and give their input. Last but not least, an effective safety committee can save your company money through reduced workers' comp insurance costs, fewer lost work days, and an increased productivity due to higher employee morale. Yeah, and when I was preparing this presentation, Kara, I really gave a lot of thought to my work experience over the years and how safety has had an impact on how happy I was at work. And as I look back at all that through working at major retailers and comparing their safety attitude compared to LSCI, the difference was really astounding. We take safety seriously here at LSCI. From our founder all the way to our most recent employee, we all want to make sure that employees go home safely every day. It makes a difference in how each of us feels about working here, and we appreciate the fact that our senior management staff really does care about our safety, health, and well being. So, we talked about the benefits of a safety committee, but let's dig in to see how to really make your safety committee stand above the rest. What's the purpose of a safety committee? Is it just for management to gather in a closed meeting and talk about it, but never really do anything? Giselle, can you give us some information about that? Oh, a safety committee is formed to reduce the risk of a workplace injury and illnesses. Yes, illnesses too. It's also proposed to inform and educate your employees about safety and health throughout all levels of the company. It gives employees the chance to provide their input and help make decisions. In previous workplaces, I have participated in safety committees where management wasn't involved, and it was really a struggle to convey to them the importance of making the needed changes to ensure the safety of the employees. The highest levels of management must be involved to ensure the effectiveness of your safety committee. It sets an example for the rest of the company. From lower level employee experience, it's a lot easier to work safe and think safety first if management is walking the walk and setting the example. Yeah. The last thing we will touch on here uh, for maximum safety committee effectiveness is setting goals. One of the biggest mistakes is setting your goal too high. You want to make sure that you set your goals so that you can achieve them. One example would be to set a goal to not have any injuries for a year. 
you're averaging 10 injuries a year, consider resetting that goal to reduce the number of injuries by 50%. So we talked about the benefits and why you should start a safety committee, but what about those committees that are meeting each month, but no progress is being made? That's a great question. The main reason that safety committees fail is a lack of focus, which will result in a lack of interest from your audience. Not everyone is a fan of meetings to begin with, but when you add a lack of focus, you're sure to be wasting people's time. A lot of people also ask, what do you need the safety committee to focus on other than safety? While safety is the main focus, you wanna look a little deeper and take it to the next level. The focus should be on specific work-related injuries within your organization. Now, to address the specifics and to avoid failure, you want to accomplish a couple of items. The first, analyze every injury or near miss in your workplace at the safety committee. One of the things Lancaster Safety has amazed me with since day one is the attention to detail on near misses. When our safety professionals working in the field have a near miss, even the ones all over the United States, those are always addressed in our safety committee meetings, and we discuss the root cause of the situation and how they can be avoided in the future. The second aspect to focus on is encouraging your employees to express their concerns regarding injuries and near misses. This point, back to the first element of OSHA's voluntary protection program, management leadership and employee involvement. Giving your employees a voice about safety is important. It helps them to buy in on the concept that safety comes first and practice it on a daily basis. The third reason is taking the time to make corrective actions. While these can be difficult to coordinate or implement, and they may even be costly to the company, remember they can also save someone's life. Remember the motto of making sure every employee goes home safely each day? We have not forgotten that. Lastly, make sure you follow up on the newly implemented changes, policies, and procedures. It's one thing to take the time to develop and implement a change or policy, but if you aren't ensuring it's being practiced, it's relatively ineffective. Reviewing new changes and policies also provides the chance for your team to make adjustments to maximize efficiency. So now we'll look at additional tips to ensure that your company's safety committee is successful. Let's not add another meeting just to add one. Let's make it effective. To start, include everyone, within reason. Successful safety committees include representatives from all levels of the company, from the CEO down to the newest employee. Now, while you're saying to include everyone, that doesn't mean everyone at the same time. You will need to have a mix of management, supervisors, team leads, and hourly employees. It's best to have designated safety committee members who attend most, if not all the meetings throughout the year. It's also recommended to have designated employees from different departments attend. You could set up a rotation schedule to have a representative per department attend, one to two meetings, then switch to another employee for the following two meetings, and so on. Lastly, you can also have the meeting be open to anyone. While we know not everyone can attend, it's best to leave it open to anyone that can attend as it fits into their schedule. At Lancaster Safety, we used to hold our meetings primarily in person and had our field safety professionals call into the meeting. Since we have switched to a more hybrid schedule, our meetings are now held via Zoom and anyone in the company can attend in addition to the safety committee members and designated employees. The goal is to encourage input from all members, regardless of the position in the company. You may be surprised with the feedback and ideas that team members may have. It can be easy to look at a problem and think of a solution, but if you aren't doing the work, it's best to get input from someone who is. Lastly, successful safety committees have a consistent date and time, as well as a structured agenda and establishing short-term goals. Schedule your meetings out for the entire calendar year so everyone has a chance to work around their schedule. Adjust as needed due to vacations and other business needs. You'll also want to have a structured agenda to get through the necessary items on the list, as well as save time for anyone to bring up ideas or concerns they may have. You'll also need someone to document the meeting, take notes or minutes, and ensure that they are sent out to everyone as a follow-up to the meeting so corrective actions can be taken.
Next, we'll look at some of the most common mistakes that can hinder a safety committee's success. Lack of communication is one of the biggest mistakes that can lead to really big problems. If you're not communicating as a safety committee, it makes it even more difficult to communicate safety improvements with the rest of your organization. From planning an organization to executing the corrections and new ideas, communication is the key to making your ideas happen. Unidentified roles, which is clearly defining roles within the safety committee, establishes what each member is responsible for. You can also break the work and to-do list items into teams or smaller groups to help eliminate overloading one person's responsibilities. Many hands make a light load. Lack of follow-up and holding safety committee members accountable for their responsibilities. If someone commits to accomplishing a task, use deadlines to make sure things are accomplished. Check in at the next meeting to ensure it was completed or add it to a long-term list if it will take more time to accomplish. Lack of management commitment. We've touched on this one a bit so far. Having upper management buy into safety and participate in safety committee meetings sets an example for the rest of the workforce. All right, so let's pause for another Insta safety quiz. How often do you hear from your safety committee? A monthly, B quarterly, C annually, or D never? You can put your answer in the chat box below. The answer to this one is flexible, but a strong suggestion. Ideally, safety committees should meet on a monthly basis. This gives the committee ample time to resolve items from the previous month and to gather necessary information for the upcoming meeting. There also needs to be communication between the committee member and non-member of your organization to share the committee's happenings, safety improvements that have been implemented and may affect job tasks or change that the committee has made. Monthly or quarterly communication with non-members is also a good reminder that the committee is there serving a purpose and encourage employees to bring safety concerns to attention and resolution. Yeah, and keep in mind, while we said this suggestion of monthly meetings is flexible, there are some state plans that have safety committee requirements based on the organization size, high-risk industry, and or incident rates. And some states also offer discounts on insurance premiums or reduced workers' comp insurance costs if your company's committee meets certain requirements. All right, so let's move on here. Let's discuss why it's important to know your audience. Yeah, so tailoring your committee's discussions to the personnel attending will help make a stronger impact in relaying the information. This is really similar to preparing for a webinar presentation. We've all taken the time to really think about who we are presenting this material to. Some of you are very seasoned veterans who know a lot more about safety than we do. Some of you might be brand new in a role as a safety director. There are some attendees today who are long-term clients of LSCI, some are newer clients of LSCI, and some are not yet clients. Some of you work in construction while others are in a general industry environment. All of these facets have been taken into account to properly plan how we would communicate this information so everyone can feel educated and encouraged going forward. The same thoughts can be used when approaching your safety committee. Do you have shy or quiet people? A good solid icebreaker like talking about recent accidents can help open the lines of communication. If you have a large company or if those present may not be familiar with everyone there, you can even start by using name tags and doing introductions. You can encourage your veteran employees to work with the newer employees to give them the confidence and comfort they need to speak up. If your members are still pretty shy, try asking them to put their thoughts in an email or write them down so their voice is still heard. Now, some of you may be thinking, well, I really wish I had a shy or quiet group. Mine is disruptive and challenges everything. And that's okay. We can help you overcome those challenges. These challenging moments allow you to work directly with someone and also engage the rest of the group to discuss issues professionally. Encourage employees to speak freely and confidently. Let them know that their opinions shared professionally will be heard and factored into decision making. This may not mean that their idea or solution will be chosen, but it does allow their voice to be heard. If their idea isn't chosen, make sure to explain why so they understand the situation was assessed 
and their idea was taken into consideration. If an employee is expressing frustration with the meeting or feeling like it's pointless, ask them why they think so and is there likely a valid reason. They may not see it being beneficial to their position or that it's a waste of their time. If so, remind them of the main goal of having a safety committee, getting employees home safely each day and reducing costs due to accidents and a loss in production. If employees are still giving pushback, give them responsibility. Ask them to do a toolbox style presentation on a safety topic or issue that they see in the workplace. Giving them responsibility and accountability to share something they care about leads them to feeling more confident in their thoughts and opinions. The majority of time, Disruptive and challenging groups are bored and lack of feeling of responsibility. Make sure to give them a role in the safety committee meeting to get them involved. If you've experienced a situation worse than what was discussed or have had a safety committee meeting go too far with interruptions, it's okay to take a break and speak to the disruptive employees in private. If it's too difficult, get management involved. Management commitment is one of the most important parts of a strong safety program. Remember, Healthy conflict leads to positive resolution. If you've ever hosted a meeting, it's very easy to get frustrated when you see people yawning, resting their head, or using their phones. Our first suggestion before you even start the meeting is to ask people to put their phones away or on vibrate so if there is an emergency call, it doesn't distract everyone. If people appear to be zoning off during the meeting, Try changing your approach and get your audience to redirect their attention. Here's an example. Say you're presenting a talk on workplace violence, which you are mostly reading off the page you printed off the internet. Reading anything to a group can get really boring really fast. Instead, you can get the group involved by asking questions that are specific to your workplace. For example, what areas of our workplace do you think are danger spots for harassment or workplace violence? Whatever the topic is, make it apply by asking specific, relatable questions or using examples. If nobody speaks up, have everyone write down their answers and then you can read them out loud. Brainstorm ways to eliminate these danger areas. Okay, so we touched a little on knowing who our audience is. Now to tune in and really get their attention. One of the more unique ideas is to use a stretch break. This is really unique in the fact that you can address your ergonomics topic at the same time. It doesn't just stop at stretch breaks though. You can discuss all the ergonomics hazards at your workplace, including heavy lifting, sitting, and, or standing for too long. When employees feel that they are bending and twisting in awkward positions and so on. We found this to be a really successful topic because most of us do experience muscle soreness during the work week. There are toolbox talks and fact sheets available for this in our safety management portal. If you are a current client of Lancaster Safety, check the info out there. If you aren't a client, reach out and we can provide you with some resources. If you want to avoid sitting down after a stretch break, demonstrate the proper way to lift something heavy. You can use empty boxes to practice this technique while also avoiding injury. Other ideas for hand-on demonstrations include a personal protective equipment demo of properly putting on a fall arrest harness, an emergency drill for fires or earthquakes, a fire extinguisher demonstration, have them physically hold a fire extinguisher to get familiar with the weight and where to pin it, then verbally walk them through the steps of how to use one. Show and tell might sound childish, but trust us when we say this works. If your company uses hand-on tools, bring in some tools or equipment that are in need of repair. Discuss the proper steps to take if an employee were to find these in the workplace. Another tactic you can try are scenario discussions. These are a really unique way to challenge your group with critical thinking and problem solving. It also shows your employees how safely directly impacts their day-to-day -day duties and also goes over the what-if situations they might not think about. This is really what the safety committee meeting is all about, improving safety in the workplace, and what better way to do that than to be proactive with hazardous situations that could possibly occur. Discussing hazardous situations and your employees' response to them can also help identify some areas where more training may be needed. Encourage your employees to really think on their feet. 
The scenario could be, suddenly Brandon is acting very delirious in the office and is sweating profusely. What are you going to do? Have the committee members discuss the situation and go over what steps they would take. All right, and now for our last Insta Safety Quiz of the day. How often does your safety committee conduct a workplace inspection? Monthly, quarterly, annually, never, or not sure? Again, you can put your answer in the chat box below. This is another flexible answer with strong suggestions. Ideally, workplace inspections should be conducted at least on a monthly basis. Depending on your type of work environment, inspections already be completed on a weekly or even daily basis. However, even if you're work in a low hazard environment, you want to consider incorporating workplace inspections into your committee meetings. It's very easy to become complacent and walk past hazards every day. Having committee members and guest inspectors conduct a dedicated inspection of the workplace may bring seemingly everyday occurrence as hazards in a new light. So how do you make your safety committee meetings more interactive and fun? This can sometimes be a challenge. Here's some quick ideas. Hold annual elections for certain leadership positions in the committee, which help prevent complacency. Create a safety slogan for your company, such as, we do it nice because we do it twice doesn't work. Safety is no accident. Being safe is our place. Keep this face safe. Even if it's a silly slogan, it's catching and it will stick in people's minds. Celebrate company safety achievements on long-term goals. You can hold a company-wide event or have a themed meeting where members dress up in their favorite sports jersey or t-shirts and provide snacks. We've discussed a lot today and applaud you for sitting in on this presentation. You are choosing to be a safety innovator working to further your company's safety culture. We'll share a big secret with you that only the best leaders know. You have to make people feel like you care before they will care about what you're saying. This is a necessity in order to effectively get your point across. Remember to be exciting, encouraging, and keep your audience involved. Success takes time and hard work, but it starts with leadership. This is a screenshot taken from our website and we cannot stress this enough. Safety is a journey. It does not happen overnight. Keep learning and working hard on your company's safety program. If you've been listening in and thinking, well, I don't have a formalized safety committee. How do I get one? We can help. Some states even offer insurance discounts for having a formalized safety committee. Call us today at 888-403-6026 for more information. So if you're a full service client of ours or you're not but are interested, um, just a few things to point out that we have available for you in our safety management portal that you can use for safety committee discussions. We have a lot of posters on various topics. We have toolbox talks. Each month we share our safety committee discussion. So if you're not even sure where to start, you can just grab that, print it out and take it to your meeting. Um, we have all different kinds of checklists available um, and our past webinars are available as well. So um, all of our resources are available in our safety management portal. And like I said, that is for full service clients. And if you're not a full service client but wants more information, definitely give us a call. Well, again, thank you so much for taking the time to listen in today. As always, if you have any further questions, just give us a call at 888-403-6026, and we'll be happy to help you. Also, make sure you're following us on social media for more news updates and safety information, or you can provide us with feedback on either Yelp, Google, or Facebook. We really do appreciate your time, and we hope you'll take advantage of our monthly safety and health webinars. Everyone is always invited to attend, and they're always free. Just visit our website or click the link on your screen for more information. Thank you so much, and have a safe day.